Ah, roll 20 is given a new error now. An unhandled low-level error occurred. The application logs may have details. We're getting there. The uh, karma modifier. That is how many karma points you get each circle. Okay, right, got it. Um, so that would, so in essence, that would be your current. Yes. Plus any leftover attribute points that you don't spend to increase attributes directly boost your starting karma. Then everybody got okay. their base attributes down. Yep. So depending on what you want to raise it to, it costs a varying point. Um, you have 25 attribute points to spend. To add a plus one to one of those is one. If you want to raise it by two, it's two. 3 is 3, but then it starts to go up. If you want to add a total of plus 4 to your starting attribute, it's 5 points, 7, 9. Is that, wait, is that from starting? 20, then? yeah, you have 25 points to spend amongst your starting attributes. Okay, okay, so since my strength is four, if I wanted to push it up by four more, it would, okay, nine. It would cost you five at that point. Okay. And then that's what I wanted to get to. Here's the, the base threshold for each one. Your step is the most important one. So for every full three points is a step modifier. 1 to 3 is 2, 4 to 6 is 3. So if you want to push it to just over the threshold oh, to get okay. to the next step, you can. Uh, during the game, you can raise an attribute point, an attribute value by up to 3 points. From our, from wherever we start the game yes, from. Yes, right? from wherever okay. you start the game from. It's a uh, varying... So basically, we might be able, if we put it at that point, we might be able to get up one more step, basically. Yes. And that's about it. Okay. So, I mean, the, the option, too, is if you're fine, like, say you want a step six, but you're fine for a while with a step five, you can put 12 points, make make the attribute a 12, which gives you a step five. And then during the game, you can immediately then spend uh, on your first advancement when you have legend points to increase it to a 13. If you wanted to go that route make it closer to that point right it just means that that's that's all you're really going to be able to do because you're yes. not going to be able to get it much um, higher toughness is determines your recovery steps or yeah your recoveries per day and your toughness is what you roll for your recovery so most people are going to have two recoveries per day if you get your toughness to 13 or higher then you get three Toughness also determines your unconsciousness rating, death rating, and wound threshold. Perception is generally your, um, like, figuring things out for the most part, noticing things, awareness, spellcasting, knowledge skills for the most part. Your uh, each discipline has a half magic thing, which is most of the stuff that your discipline would know how to do without forcing you to actually put skill points into it. 
weaponsmiths, you can pick up a sword and identify who made it by the marks on it with a half magic roll. Most of these are your perception step plus your circle. Willpower determines your mystic defense and mystic armor, I believe. Yes, I believe that's correct. Strength is carrying capacity, how much damage you dish out. Dexterity is your physical defense, how hard you are to hit, and it's generally what you roll in addition to attack in order to hit. And then charisma determines your social defense and social interaction talents. And for every point that you don't spend of that 25 directly adds to your starting karma, but not your modifier. Any questions so far? No, I think I'm okay here. On the um, character sheet, um, do you want us to put, you know, once we've spent the points, do you want that then to become our base value? Or do you want that to be the current value? Um, that character sheet doesn't have... Uh, put your your current value, after. so after you spend your points for that. Because roll 20 has, when you put in your race on the character sheet, it sets the base, and then you spend your points and it modifies it for you. So as long as you know what your ending value is, you can backwards enter all that. Gotcha. Did you all notice that strength is uh, spelled wrong on the character sheet? Is it really? Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of roll 20, I think it's back up now. I can't get in. I get to the loading page. I'm getting a cloud for flare error. Which implies to me they're under a DNS attack. Oh, wait. I just got a page load. Yep, I'm getting a page loading, too. Not me yet. Oh, I see roll 20 loading. All right, I am in. Hey, mine loaded. Still doesn't like me. 
I'm still not in either. I did get as far as uh, where all of our games were sitting in Roll20, but as soon as I clicked the Earth on one, it decided to uh, not let me in. Problems. All right. I'll just go back to the other sheet for a moment. All right. All right. So let's see what I want to do with this. All right. And we have some basic stats that are actually important to our class, right? Yes. So for the Beastmaster, what they recommend is a charisma, dexterity, and willpower is what it says. Yes, dexterity because you need to attack. Beastmasters are a very martial class or discipline. Charisma because mm -hmm. you have a lot of talents that dominate animals and things like that. And charisma is how you do that. If you don't wish to go that route, you can not worry too much about charisma. Actually, why does it recommend willpower, I wonder? Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, that I'm not sure, unless it's strictly for Mystic. Uh, it might be a carryover. I know willpower was originally what? Uh, claw shape used for damage. Oh, that I think it's um, dexterity now, isn't it? The claw shape is strength. Yeah, strength. Oh, strength. Oh, oh, that's going to be horrible for me. I well, have to really that. figure out. That it's now. your what? rank plus your strength plus three. So, if your starting strength is a step two, you're going to be doing a minimum of six with a rank one. Right. So, so it's Beastmasters can also spend karma on damage. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because mine was what a four, so it's step three is starting. And generally, what windlings okay. do is make up for their very low stats by spending karma on everything just to get yeah. some. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would recommend if you have a spare point, put it into an extra karma. Put it into what? Well, when you're increasing, when you're buying your initial attributes up, right, you got to spend points to get attributes, right? Anything left over, you get additional karma points every day to use. So you might as well, as a windling, take advantage of that and get an extra karma point or two. Oh, so if I, I want to make clear, uh, if, if you I only don't spend, spend all my points, yeah, if you only spend twenty-two of those twenty-five points. The remaining three is added to your starting karma value. So instead of six karma a day, you would have nine. No, no, no. Granted, like uh, your karma modifier, like that six value, that you get at every circle. So right now, you get you go from having six karma to nine karma. Once you're like a fifth circle, then you go from having thirty karma to thirty-three karma because those three points they get less impactful over time, but it helps at the start. Yes. Useful. Okay, so it, it does it. So the six is every level, but the extra three it stays just three. Yeah, it's a one time say. thing. Okay. After IPA, the first IPA, couple IPA. circles, okay. your attributes matter less and less. Oh, okay. I'm into roll 20. Oh, let me see. Yep, I see one person popping in. Well, it just, unable to it just let you edit, in. So I, think the I think it's not fully fixed yet. You know, oh. you know what? I, I think they saw your complaint and let you in, but nobody else. <laughs> they didn't care about anybody else. Give the character sheet a few seconds. It did that to me last time. Okay. When okay you I'm open on the up main the page. Okay. Yeah, when you open up the sheet, it needs a few seconds to fully load. I imagine Roll20 servers are also taking a beating from everyone trying to reconnect all at the same time right now. Probably. All right, all right. So, da, da, da. And, and, but the dexterity then is for just, uh, that's for the defense basically, right? It's for defense, it's for attacking, melee and ranged attacks. Oh, okay. So the dexterity is for the actual attack roll, and yes. then the the strength is for the uh, actual damage. Damage roll. 
Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. 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 So basically, I'm more likely to hit, but even if my damage is slightly less because I'm a windling. Gotcha. Okay. Nope, it broke again. <laughs> Let me go back to this then. Uh, do we start with her racial language? Or does it, like, if we pick our two free ones to be different, we don't speak it? And is physical defense is that your dex or is that your toughness? Your toughness is your wound threshold, right? Yes. Physical defense is dex, yeah. Uh, okay. So you get uh, two language skills. Um, and you have to choose. So if you put one point in your racial, then you'd need one point in Throlic, probably. And you get one point in read-write. So you can read and write one language. Now, you do get eight skill points you can spend however you want. And if you want more languages, you can spend them there. But... Yeah. But there are lots of options for those free skill points. More than for your talents. Let's see. How do you stop sharing a page on VC? Uh, actually, Joe, can you go back to the page that had the cost of the, uh, the stuff? Because yeah. that's probably you more useful right now. Um, okay. Going to share the uh the three is just point per point okay i gotcha this instead oh hey it's got everything on there well wait no uh, oh whoops sorry i had to move it it's got the base the Attribute modifier, oh, okay. you can also get more points if you want to lower an attribute. Okay. And these are... Yeah, okay. So, in average, what are we talking about? Like, um, when we're talking about the av the attributes, the 25 karma is for everything in character creation or just the attributes? The, the 25 points is for attributes. Oh, okay. So any uh, this, so I don't have to worry about. I I can literally spend all of these and not care about what comes next. Right. Okay, that makes life easier. So your move is set and your karma modifier is set, but you can buy points in your dex, strength, toughness, perception, willpower, and charisma. So for windlings. Uh, toughness 8 is going to give you a starting unconsciousness rating of 16, starting death rating of 20, but you add your circle to that, so it will actually be 21, and a wound okay. threshold of 6, which means any attack that does 6 or more damage will do a wound. Okay, I guess there's my question then. Is that good or not? Like, what is the average damage on we're talking about output, output like at, at the beginning levels in a sense? So well, the step if you had like a human, like a human with like ten strength wielding a broadsword, they'd be rolling step ten damage against you. Yep, and that is the step is the average damage, it'd or average damage? roll in general. No, it'd be average roll, right? A step ten damage is actually an average of ten. It does average as ten. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see. So as a windling. Your, if you crank up your starting dex, uh, for instance, to a 16, which isn't too bad, mm -hmm. your physical defense is a 9, which on average means that you need a step 9 to hit you. So Ooh. that human okay. with a dex of 10 is starting out by rolling a step 5. So they need several more points in their melee weapons to hit you. Most low-level humanoids, name givers, will, are probably going to roll in the six to eight range. Generally, there's going to be exceptions. Okay. So tougher to hit is what you're saying. That would be a pretty tough person to hit overall. Yes, if, if, or that for those type of things. Okay. 
Interesting. Okay. But a 16 would cost me what? I'm starting at 11. So that would be plus, uh, uh, no, five, right? So it'd be seven points if I were to do that. Yep. And notably, there are all kinds of other things that can affect these, like armor to get damage reduction, shields to get more physical defense, your circle will add to your durability. All mm -hmm. those kinds of but Joe, what, what page is the uh, listing of step uh, number and step dice on? Do you know offhand? Oh, the dice itself? Yes. It is kind of early on, 32. And yeah, those, like if you're using normal average values, I believe they don't actually equal the step, but with the exploding, adjust, if you adjust the average value for the explosions, then it does actually hit the, the average value equals the step number. Yeah. It's, uh, so if you take the average, you round up, so on a D8, it's four and a half. You round up five at step five. When you get to mm -hmm. something like a D10, D8, which is step 11, it's five and a half and four and a half, which is 10. At which point, if you have an even number like that, you add one. No. I think, I think no, I think the, the average value of a D6 is 3.5. The average value of an exploding D6 is like 4.03 something. Yeah, something whatever. like that. I never knew that that, that was how that, that was figured. Interesting. Yeah, once you start getting into more than one die, you're adding one to the average result that you get to account for the exploding. When it's a single die, you're rounding up. So the average on a D12 is six and a half. You round up to seven. But once you get to 2D6... The average is seven, but since it's more than one die, you add one, and it's a step eight result. And that generally holds true for most of the results after that. Although notably, we're talking about average values. Earth Dawn dice, because they explode, have a tendency to just do nutty things a lot of the time, just like you just yeah. roll a 60 on a step 12. Or in the one podcast I'm listening to, they're complaining because they'll roll a step 16 and get a five. Okay, so the, the willpower is the the willpower is the magic defense, right? Is it yes. the same similar? It's the same defense rating just for magical attacks, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. So I'm already at that. Okay. Oh, I see one of you back in roll twenty. Yep. Seems to and be working PR, now. And is that faster this time? Better? I'm sorry. Yes. Say that again now. Sorry, P-E-R, that's perception? Perception. That okay, all right. And that's just being able to notice things, stuff like that, or...? It is your general um, sort of equivalent would be an intelligence step in other games. Oh, it is for okay. things like, like that. But it's like intelligence, but if your perception rules were based on that instead of... Yeah. Or whatever. Okay. She can, she, uh, they can stay at that 11 then. <laughs> per perception is for a lot of tasks that, even physical tasks that aren't really strength or dex related, like forge weapon is a physical task, but it's not something you muscle through, so strength doesn't matter. It's not something you deftly do, so dex doesn't matter. So perception is kind of a catch all for some of that stuff. Ah, uh, okay. It's fine. And it's for notice checks. Everybody gets, as a default skill, awareness, which defaults to your perception step. Unless you go and get the talent and increase it, or increase the skill. They would start at a... Okay, I gotcha. They would start at a you, five. Yeah, okay. You also use it for things like uh, uh, artisan skills sometimes use it. Knowledge skills always use it. Um, uh, Spellcasters use it for casting spells. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the two points is worth to push it up to a 13. Okay, we'll see. Um, oh, uh, important to your fit your character. Windlings have astral sight. You'll be using your perception step if you wanted to use your astral sight. 
Yes. Windlings have it as a racial talent. Now, normally, if you don't put any points into a talent, you can't use the talent. And they could kind of forgot to mention, but it's I think they errated it or whatever. Windlings can use Astral Sight at a rank zero by just rolling Perception if you want. Okay, so it'd just be my straight Perception roll. Okay, yeah. and Astral Sight used for them? Astral Sight lets you um, pick up patterns on items. It's also because when you're looking astrally living creatures have an astral aura or whatever so in a way it kind of helps you see at night not necessarily by giving you more details but by picking up auras of things as long as you can beat the the uh it's kind, it's kind of like detect magic and life sight kind yeah of thing. and also like it is normally like Horrors kind of leave a pollution in astral space, makes it very difficult to see anything. And often it can be a good, even if you fail your astral sight, it can be good to know exactly how difficult it is to see in the astral, which gives you an idea of, oh, how, how much horror corruption is there in this area. Yeah. But having spellcasters in the group, they are probably going to be better at it than you. So it's not something you have to worry about. But okay. it's the option if you want it. And then starting equipment we can deal with later. Has everybody got their attributes bought? Almost. <laughs> this is not as easy as you uh, is, uh, just because I'm trying to like balance stuff. Okay, let's see. Strength. Okay. Yeah, I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. Well, if you have questions or you know want recommendations ask we I'll can look take up a recommendation talents. for um the the one i was going to be weaponsmith which i think perception was the main one that they used for everything perception, perception is very yeah. good for them but also i mean weaponsmiths can also be pretty decent frontline fighters and so like having like a decent dex and strength like 13 or something like that is helpful they also get yeah. social talent, so a good charisma can be helpful. Yeah, yeah I was about to say, weapon spins are pretty much all over the board, so even if you just put, like, four points into every single attribute, you'll still be okay. And you may be honest, that's true, for, all of, that's, that's true for pretty much any character. You can just get, like, 13s across the board, and you'll be happy. Sorry, Chris, say that again. Oh, since, since we don't necessarily have uh, like an actual fighter or swordmaster, um, you may be one of our frontline fighters. Our late player warrior was one of his choices, so he might go that route. Well, cavalryman and beastmaster are also both. Yeah, uh, yeah. cavalryman is I'm not slouch, probably, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm probably going frontline fighter as well. If and I can just win link beastmaster is death of a thousand paper cuts. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably what he's what I'm going with on this one. Uh, if I can just get the, I think I'm struggling with the strength, even though like I, I'm not trying to I'm trying to figure out where it should be at, you know. Given that it starts as a four, it makes it very expensive to boost up to something somewhat. I mean, reasonable. Honestly, strength strength isn't really that. It isn't really that big a deal. Like, uh, it isn't like D and D or anything like that, where it's like you're a strength fighter or a dexterity fighter. Everyone's a dexterity fighter. Strength is nice, but it's not super yeah. important. So okay. every circle or every rank that you add to your claw shape is going to boost your damage by by an extra by, by an extra by an step. Extra step. So uh, a four okay. starts out at what step three, right? Yeah. And claw shape was rank plus strength, plus three. So minimum step seven damage, which is... Oh, so what's the dice on that? 16. Uh, oh, one one okay. issue other windlings have is, uh, like, weapons will have a minimum strength required to use, but you just don't need to worry about that. Because yeah, because I, I just, like, create claws, so right. I don't need weapons. Okay, all right. Because you are a sharp windling. So, yeah, that yeah. human with right. the, the broadsword... Right, would be doing 2d8 damage. You're doing a d12 damage. Straight with the strength four, um, one rank in claw shape. 
Okay, so if I boost it up to a, to a seven, that would put me at step four. It's inexpensive because it'd be three. Okay, all right, all right. I mean, honestly, more relevant than the damage step might just be the carrying capacity because windlings can't carry very much stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll put that's, me at a whole 50. <laughs> is that like 50 pounds? That's what, pounds? That, that that's what, what the obsidian's for. That's what yeah. the obsidian's yeah. for. Yeah. But yeah, just carry all my stuff. Windlings love obsidian. Obsidian tolerate windlings. Generally, you know, stereotypically there. Guess whose shoulder I'll be sitting on pretty much the entire time. That's so why. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Unless one of the rest of you don't mind me sitting on your shoulder, then I'll probably sit on your shoulder too. But you know. <laughs> oh no way! Uh, totally, man. You can help me with some of my uh, my illusion magic. This will be great when we do uh, shows in town. Oh, oh, okay. Look at that. Someone else who doesn't mind me. It's great. All right, well, we'll, put some, we'll put some fake fire on you and make you like the avenging uh, windling, you know, fire angel or something like that. If you swoop the crowd. So mm -hmm. if you're on roll 20 already and you can get to your sheet, it is laid out slightly odd in that the race and discipline are kind of under all of a lot of junk where it should be at the very top. Yeah, so you can set the race, and then I think by default it has like all the different character creation point system. It has that built in. Yeah. But once you're finished with that, there's a button to attributes, details, hide or show, and that basically like once you're done, with, once you're done with character creation, just hide them because you won't need to look yeah. at them anymore. Okay. Let's see what my scores end up being. I think it's a sixteen. A seven, six, eight. What is that one? My brain is not working here. <laughs> uh, what did I do? One, two, oh, 13. So a toughness of 13 isn't too shabby, I hope. No. One threshold of nine. I mean, I started nine, at eight, so. Three recoveries a day, one threshold of nine. Um, for martial classes, 13 is a good baseline. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was, I was struggling because, you know, they started as an eight. So it was like, okay. It's a lot of points to kind of boost it up to anything more than that. So, uh, well, all right. I just pushed up charisma up to like a 13 just to kind of get to the next step. And same with perception, up, uh, you know, just because I, I felt like that was okay. Willpower, where am I at with that? Uh, so it starts at 10. I pushed it up to a 13. Um, two more points isn't going to get me anywhere, really. Yeah, I might just keep the other two points. Uh, as my karma pool thing, because I I don't see putting them in anything is going to be particularly useful. Right. Yeah, I think I'm okay. So let's see, let me put my actual scores down. What I think I ended up coming up with was dexterity 13, strength 18, because you know, said a man. Toughness 17, perception 15, willpower 13, charisma 10. Willpower 10? Uh, willpower 13, Charisma 10. Okay. Yeah, Weaponsmiths, one of the, the abilities they get at Third Circle, which is very important, is Suppress Curse. And that is based on willpower. Weaponsmiths are such a weird hodgepodge of abilities. Like yeah. Art, like... art Martial Fighter, part like Anti-Mage, part just like utility craftsman person. For important attributes, it should have said, really, what's not important? That, that's actually what I was running into because when I was digging into them, like I said, listed perception, willpower, charisma is important. But I could see where all of them would be important in some fashion. But at least a Cividen kind of made that a little bit easier. But that was a lot of points to spend to put perception up a little bit higher where I wanted to actually be the, you know, yeah, weapon smart so, guy. So where do we input our values on the roll twenty character sheet? Do we do it on the attributes and abilities tab, or do we do so, it on the character sheet tab? On the core, on the character sheet tab, 
The attributes and abilities tab is more on the back end. It's how to determine the function so you don't generally you ignore that side. On the character sheets tab you go down towards the bottom of the box on the line starting with renown and that's where you can set your race and your discipline. And when you set your race it will fill in your racial minimums in the attribute lines. Then in the green box the AP row column yeah column you put how many points you're spending there or rather hold on ooh, ooh, your Tony might let me in <laughs> and as you popped in on the field no so in the green box you type in how many attribute um, the value you're adding to the value don't worry about the points it will figure out the points for you so if you were raising your strength by three points, you would add three in the little green box. And then once you click... So, so it's not the points spent, it's the points that you raised it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And click like somewhere in the light blue gray area, and it will then tally your total and in the upper left corner right under karma it shows you how many points you have left to how many attribute points you have left to spend um my character sheet thing is blank i don't have any of those fancy tabs um hold on i exist give it uh yeah, give it a few seconds. It should fill in. It should generate. Because I opened up the one assigned to you, and it's there. It was just giving people um, trouble right when it started up. And hello, existence. It may load for me someday. On the flip side, I think I'm pretty much done with my character. Okay. 16, 7, 13, 13, 13, 13. Wait, did I really have that many 13s? Yeah, it's, I, it's, first I've got four 13s too, which is kind of like, it's a, it's a stat that's not too hard to get with your ability points, and it's kind of a nice, nice break point for your stuff. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. I was like, oh, wait, you're right. I have four 13s. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. my first iteration trying to build everything up was mostly thirteens. Also, thirteens are pretty right on. It's lucky number at Earth Dawn. Put you at a nice baseline for the steps and for the defenses and stuff. I just realized I don't have, I only have one step that isn't six. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, only, uh, well, I have a, uh, yeah, just my strength. <laughs> my, my dexterity is a seven step. That's always nice. That is nice to start, yes. Keep getting spam calls from Kissimmee, Florida. Okay, so oh, this is just your your regular. Uh, I don't know. I have to look at uh, what it. How long? How long does a winling live for? Let me see.
Joe, since roll 20 is not working for me, do you want me to like paste this into Discord for my character? Um. Yeah, hold on. Ooh, I can live to be 170 years old. Ooh, this opens up for my age here. Yeah, if a troll doesn't pop your head. Yeah. So I got the obsidian man to protect me. He can he can pop the troll's head. See, it's fine. Can you get to the loading page at all? It, it shows loading and that's it. It has never gotten past that. Uh, yeah, it, it was a little sluggish for me. I just refreshed it a dozen times and eventually it did it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not critical to me. I mean, like I said, I've already got everything filled out for the most part. I can send it to you on Discord. Yeah, I can start filling it out when I have time here. Although I now have a sheet assigned to you. It wasn't showing you logged in, at least assigned to the table yet. So, Guy, did you determine which you wanted, warrior or wizard? So far, now we have a uh, Tuscrang Nethermancer, a Dwarf Cavalryman, a Human Illusionist, a Windling Beastmaster, and an Obsidian Weaponsmith. Uh, actually, I was going to do Sky Raider. Sky Raider, okay. The Tuscrang Sky Raider. Interesting. Yeah, I kind of like it. I mean, it's fun to play a lizard folk and or lizard person. <laughs> so on your sheet, on the core tab of the character sheet, underneath all of the attributes is where the drop down box for race and discipline are. Yep, I got them both. Okay. Um, are you seeing the screen share through VC? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you have, to your base, you have uh, 25 points to spend on attribute modifiers. Each point you add to the attribute value costs a varying number of points from that 25 However, the table will do the math for you. If you just on the green box put in how many points, um, how many numbers you want to raise your attribute by, it will auto calculate how many points it cost. And then for everybody past that step, is everybody else past that step now? I don't have the character sheet. Still? Let me see if I can give you another one, if that'll help. And I really don't know how to do attributes. On, I'll show you in a second here. Uh, it's more along the lines of I don't know where to put points. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, it should give you some suggestions on your class, right? All right, Matt, do you have another character sheet with the name O Headdank Demi? Yes. See if that one will actually let you edit it. You say Sky Raider? Is that the one you wanted? Yeah, I'm looking for it right now. It yeah, looks like it will let me uh, edit it. Charisma, Dex, and Strength is what this says. 
That one will let you, you said? Yes. Okay. Sky Raiders intimidate their opponents, and they have, like, uh, battle shouts type stuff. And uh, so that's what charisma is for, because charisma is used for social attacks. And then, like, dexterity for melee weapons, and strength for damage, and toughness for taking damage. Okay, and where do I put in the karma, or do I do it in AP or LP? Um, AP is the, the number by which you're raising your attribute. 13s are a general good baseline. As a Tuscrang, I think you start with 10s and 11s in most areas, right? Uh, uh, our charisma starts out as 11. Yeah, so you, ha you start with 10s uh, in strength, perception and willpower, and 11s in dex, toughness, and charisma. So to raise it by one point cost you one of your attribute points. To raise it by two cost you two. Once you get it's one for one up to three and then it starts to cost more. So to raise it by a total of four cost you five of your 25 character points. If you wanted to raise it by five it cost you seven. You have enough to put um, three into all of them, and then you can raise a few by f a total of four. But toughness as a martial character, you probably want that to get that to at least a 13. Toughness determines your unconsciousness rating and your death rating and your wound threshold. A 13... Right. Scaly. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, Scaly, what were those three key attributes? Um, strength, dex, and charisma, and then toughness for you because you're going to be fighting people. So. Okay. Sorry about that, Joe. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. I was just going to give you values. 13 toughness gives you a wound threshold of 9 and 3 recoveries a day. Um, to get a wound threshold of 10, you can bump it up to 15 if you wanted to. And what your wound threshold is, is determines how much damage you have to take in a single hit before you take a wound. Okay, so I think I think I got this pretty well balanced. Uh, fifteen dex, fourteen strength, fifteen toughness, thirteen perception, twelve willpower, and fifteen charisma. You might want to show him the chart though, just so he understands what that means. And um, note you no, during the game. Yeah, during game you can only raise them each of these by three after the whatever you set it at. So you can't raise these any more than three after you've set it down, just so you know. Yeah, I think I can live with this. I mean, okay. uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, I, I, I'm Sky Raider is. I, I'm reading some of the stuff on Sky Raider. Uh, Sky Reader was a discipline that started in the, in the, the troll moots. They would um, uh, form small little tribes up in the mountains, and then they would make their own little sort of like uh, Norse-style uh, boats that were airships, and then they would row themselves out over settlements, and they would do raiding, and they would essentially bring their sort of canoes down over a village and then jump out of them and you know, strike down at their targets and, you know, waylay villages and stuff like that and then raid and take their stuff and fly back. Of course, 
Now it's not just the trolls. I guess a good sort of meme, if you want to like wrap your head around it, is sort of like the Vikings, right? They would like go out and, and see and go raid other towns and stuff and then bring their stuff back. They do have a strong sense of honor, um, especially among the trolls, um, and, and a code of conduct, and, and uh, this is part of the discipline. So I don't know if it's what you're thinking of in terms of flavor. Yeah, I'm just curious if this works the same way as Shadowrun, where having a good dex means you're more likely to hit, while having a high strength means you're likely to do more damage if you hit. Generally, That's yes. pretty much how it works. But okay. your talent ranks are going to eventually overshadow your attributes. Well, hey, considering this guy is like, you know, twice my poor paladin in attributes already. Still loading. All right. The uh, the formatting of what you sent me, Jeff, is off. The equal is the end result, right? Yeah. The 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 starting number plus the how much I raised it. The first number is how many points I spent. The equals is the final attribute size, and then the step number, and then the secondary stuff based off of it. Okay. Some of these are off slightly then for some reason. Let's see if the chart matches. So I got your, your decks. Saying you spent three points and got it to a 13, but spending three points gets it to a 14. Oh, I just, I guess I miscalculated that. It's 11 plus three, so it should be a 14. You're right. Mm, looks like that was the only one I messed up. Okay. Yeah, because you had one point left over that way which would have gone into karma, but I wasn't seeing it on karma either. Yeah, I don't think it changes anything. No. Uh, it adds... Mm, no, I don't think it changes anything to start anyway. All right, so for anybody that is finished with that step, let me know and I will get you your starting talents if you want. Which talents yeah. have their own tab there. All right. Yeah, I'm ready for that. Yeah, all right. the core attributes have been put in and spent. All right, let me do Illusionist first. Is this on our, on our class thing as well, like on the PDF? On the, uh, if you want to keep using the PDF, I don't have that stated, but these would go in a talent section. 
I think I closed the one. No. Okay. Oh, it's like right at the top where it says talents and abilities. Is yeah. That it? uh, mm-hmm. it's, these are just the beginning talents, right? On the PDF that I had that options. you got sent. Yeah, it says novice talent options. Is that where you're at? For the class for in the book, the um, for your discipline, first circle talents. Oh, okay. It'd be under the first circle, not yeah. the not the random ones at the top. Okay, no. so these are like the ones that you auto get from being in the first circle. Basically, yes. Right. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Cool. So for illusionist discipline talents, false sight, first impression, pattern craft, spell casting. And thread weaving illusionism. And then it looks like I get the two free standard matrices. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so all of those talents, though, the discipline talents, I get those at a rank one? No, you have to put points into them. You get eight points to spread among your starting talents. And you the, don't and have, you can't have yeah, that I rank can also choose. And then I can also choose from the novice talent options. Correct? Yes, you can choose one talent. You don't have to choose that right away if you don't want to. The slot never goes away. If you wanted to wait till second circle to choose one or three games in to choose one, you can do that. The slot never goes away if you don't choose it right when you circle up. And your free talents, your matrices, will always equal your circle. You don't put points into those. And three is the highest you can put to any one talent. Makes sense. Who's ready for the next one? You can just confirm mine because I think I see it. Is it the the um, avoid blow claw shape, uh, the thread weaving, unarmed combat, and wilderness survival? Those of them. Yes. And then for Weaponsmith, Matt, you got yours, or you need them? I'm ready to get them down. Forge Weapon. Item History. Melee Weapons. Steel Thought. And Thread Weaving, Thread Smithing is your specific discipline version. Oh, this is still going on here, so I can do this too. Would I put Astral Sight in here as well at this point, or is it somewhere else? That would go in Racial Talents. Uh, Is there a separation? I just see Talents. Um, I think it just goes with talents. Yeah. Maybe with write in write in notes that it's a racial one, which there is there is a slight difference because uh, you can use karma on any talent that you roll, but not on racial ta- talents. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I don't see a different spot for it. So. Yeah. So it'd go in talents. Okay, so for all this other stuff that we're putting in, I mentioned the attribute is if it has an attribute related to it, right? Yes. Okay, strain makes sense. Base rank is just what rank we put it in, whatever we put through the rank we put it at. Yes, you have eight points to spend. You can raise any individual talent up to three. You could put 
two each into four different talents if you want. Oh, I see. And there's a little checkbox for combat tab. So if I want this on like my claw shape on the combat tab, I would checkbox that. Yes. Okay. Got uh, would that be the same with like avoid blows? Is that what about your combat skill? Yes. All right. So I think this is where I had a question. So with unarmed combat, is that related to my claw shape or not? My claw. Uh, that's why I'm confused. I think I was confused by that. Unarmed combat is what you use to attack. Claw shape is what with... you use to do damage. Uh, okay, so my claw rank is the damage, and the unarmed combat is my attack. Okay, got gotcha. you. Right, so we'll do that. Uh, Urkan has only a few basic attack skills. Yeah. Um, unarmed, unarmed, melee weapons, ranged weapons, projectile weapons, and and. Basically, they're all deck space, but they're just basically four different categories. Um, there are a couple of quirky, occasional items we find with special rules or something, but for the most part, basically, that's it. There's no proficiencies or anything like that. Okay, so if claw shape is strength plus rank, Plus three, would I put it under rank mods or step mods? Like, where, where would that mod become? A co at? Uh, let me finish loading the table again and I'll figure okay. out. It might auto fill it in. So, if you just put your rank, it might auto fill in the total step when you roll it. I'm not sure. It doesn't. Uh, all right. So, if I put it at rank one, uh, just do the roll. All right, Joe, uh, let me check and make sure I got my talents correct. Battle Shout, Climbing, Fire Blood, Melee Weapons, Thread Weaving, Sky Weaving. Yes. Now, every discipline gets a Thread Weaving. That is how you interact with the threads that you find. When you find magical items, in order to attune to them, you weave threads to them, and it takes Thread Weaving to do it. So it's not a talent you want to neglect. But on the other hand, it's also not likely to come up like right away or all the time. Unless you're a spellcaster. Spellcasters yeah. use it all the time. Okay, no, I, th I got it. it. It's a step modifier, right? Because it increases your step. Okay, no, I think I understand. You know, I do have to manually put it in because it only put it as a five when I put rank one in. Okay. So, yeah, so it's a step mod. Okay. It's eight. That makes more sense. The damage is an eight. Okay. Which is rolling what two d six if it's only at rank one. Okay, got it. And then eventually you will get claw frenzy, which lets you make multiple attacks. As long as you're using claw shape for the damage, you can start spending strain to do additional attacks. That's when you turn into the Cuisinart. And as Joe, as you improve in circles, um, you can like uh, from the novice from the novice talent options, you can um, purchase those at like rank one as you go through first through fourth circle, right? Yes. So each uh, each circle, you get one option. From first to four, you can only choose from the novice talents. Once you hit fifth circle, you can pick from the journeyman. Uh, options, but if there was still a novice option you wanted, you could pick that as one of your journeyman options. But at that point, it cost you more to raise it. Got it. But yeah, you have four options per name rank, and there's ten options available, so some of them it's pick and choose. And yeah, I clicked that stupid link for help in the chat thinking it would open in another window and it didn't so now I can't get back onto the table well the loading screen is showing up faster for me <laughs> that's where I'm at now yeah I made that mistake too and I was like oh, oh no back back <laughs> 
back. <laughs> Uh, if you have the option for avoid blow, I recommend it. Um, essentially, avoid blow is used after you get hit, but before damage is rolled to avoid getting hit. <laughs> so it lets you sort of like throw yourself out of the way, possibly, of, of incoming attacks. It's your shatter on dodge roll. Yep. And in this case, ties go to you. If your physical defense is a 10, they roll a 10 to hit you, and they hit you with it. When you roll your avoid blow, you have to match what they rolled in order to avoid it. You don't have to beat what they rolled. Hold on. I need assistance now. Um, huh? I, I, I understand. I see what y'all are talking about, but my, my huh is coming from the fact that I only listed my discipline talents. Am I supposed to put in the novice talents as well? You get to choose one. <laughs> I get to choose one. But there yes. are a lot here, and they're very pretty. Yes, yes there are. <laughs> yes, they Places. are. They make things very difficult for you. I, I I'm like taking a void blow. <laughs> I like fire blood, and I like to void blow. Wait, hold on. Now I'm confused. I only choose one of the discipline talents? No, you choose one novice talent option every circle. Your discipline talents you get. For first circle, you get all five of those. Okay. And then I only choose one novice talent option, right? Yes, at first circle. And then every circle after, you get to choose another one. Avoid blow is a good one to start to help try to avoid incoming damage. It's a gamble. You have to spend a point of strain to do it, though. So if you fail, you take one additional point of damage than you would have. But if you succeed, you only take the one. For Sky Raiders, Danger Sense is good because if you are hit by a trap, you get to roll Danger Sense instead of just initiative to try to beat the trap for it to not affect you. Windcatcher is one that's really cool. Not it doesn't necessarily come up a lot, but it's basically you become a human parachute and just kind of while you're falling, you can have that just kind of catch you in the air and you can float down gently to wherever you want to land. Uh, which is like how Sky Raiders do their aerial bombardment paratrooper drops. Death from above. Yeah, I'm gonna take a void blow and hopefully I can dodge Earth. <laughs> You dodge Earth, you enter low orbit, you never come back. You might have to roll again for the moon. Yeah. No, I'm just dodging the Earth. The ocean and the rivers, I'm playing out of luck on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting to the loading screen faster, but that's about it. All right. So you said we got eight points for these, right? Correct. What are my optional ones? Let's see what we got here. We can only choose one of the optional ones, so correct? Yeah. Ooh, all right. I get acrobatic defense. Interesting. Animal bond, animal training. And then for advancement, Borrowed. I'm doing the optional that you can use um, any of your talents to advance instead of only your discipline talents. Normally, you would have to have all five of your discipline talents to a minimum of rank two in order to qualify for circle two. I'm letting you choose any five from either your discipline talent or and or your optional talent. And then each time you go up a circle, you'll have more to choose from, but the amount you need goes up slowly, too. That will probably make more sense when I get there. Yeah. It's just the default rule means of your five discipline talents, you want to get two of um, four of them up to two before you can 
all five of them up to two before you circle. So one thing some people will do is put two each into four of them, and then you can raise the last one up by two during the game for the quickest way, but it using all of your available to pick and choose the ones you want is a little more versatile. So it doesn't shoehorn you into taking talents you don't want necessarily or that you don't use often. Come on, table, let me back in. Okay, let me ask this for the group. Uh, am I the only melee combatant, so to speak? Primary combatant? Probably not. Uh, I'm melee, uh, the Beastmaster. I basically sprout claws and slice everything up to pieces. And I, think, and I think I'm the other big giant rock dude in front. And I am the cavalryman. I am two melee combatants. And I'm melee in the sense that I probably take a lot of damage. When okay. I'm hit, because I'm not a good fighter at all. We are, we are very melee heavy. No. no, you're the damage sponge. <laughs> I'm out and everybody hides behind. Actually, given that we have a lot of uh, frontline, I'm slightly tempted to switch from cavalrymen to something a little bit more support focused, but not sure. I don't think you need to do it on our behalf. I mean, I think the group's fairly well plushed out. I might go with actual tracking just because I, it's something a little out of combat, you know? Yep. Yep. Always nice to have a few things to do outside of combat. Yeah. Um, now, there is um, on the. I think I put it there. So on the chart that I shared, that on the right-hand side of it shows talents available as skills. If there is a talent you like that your discipline doesn't get, you can still learn it as a skill. The thing being, you can't spend karma when you use it as a skill. Ah. But so it's just a, whatever your straight rank and roll. Uh, attribute. Yes. Okay. And advancing skills takes longer because you actually have to train and learn how to do it, whereas a talent, you just kind of meditate and magically get better. Interesting. And then down below that, I have the default skill table. Those are the skills that everybody can use at rank zero. You don't have to put points oh. into them if you don't want to. So everybody can melee weapons... Oh with just their decks if they want to. You can use Avoid Blow, too. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, but you can't spend Karma. The default skill table? Yeah. In the character sheet? It's No, it's on the uh, the chart that I shared. It's got the collection of different... There's a tech like your default of Pop Pups, and it's on, it's on one of those charts. It's on yeah. the big chart with all of the yeah tables on it. It's over on the bottom uh, right. And then example knowledge skills, what's that for? Just uh, Everybody gets two ranks of knowledge skills. Those are just some examples. Uh, just like in mm -hmm. Chatterrun, man. Yeah. You, I have yeah. a grand knowledge of anime playing cards. Everybody also gets one rank in an artisan skill. And if we haven't talked about that, one of the things that people have learned, so they think, is that if you are horror marked, you lose your creativity. Horrors are not allowed to be creative. So one of the greeting rituals is generally you will get together and demonstrate your artisan skill. So if you have basket weaving, you might sit there and weave a basket during the greeting ritual. If you have singing, you'll sing a song. And if you pass the test, people are like, alright, yeah, you're fine, you're not horror marked, and that's it. But when you meet somebody out in the stranger and they fail, then it's no guarantee that they're horror marked, but it makes people more suspicious of you. 
each discipline has a typical artisan skill like magicians often do embroidery they will embroider their robes and stuff because they're always wearing their robes but you don't have to do the default recommended one you could do something else if you wanted to and we got one rank in artisan skills yes So it says you said that we can use some of these talents as skills. How many points would we be using for that? Uh, you get eight points to put into your skills. So eight points for these talents, and then another eight points for the skills. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. All right. And, Reasonable. Okay. And those eight are divided up amongst your general knowledge, artisan, and language. Yes. Hmm. Not exactly. I mean, you get you get you get some bonus. You get some two points that only go into knowledge skills. One point that only goes into artisan, uh, like the two points that go into speaking language, and one point that goes into reading. And then you have eight more that you can spend on anything. And if you want, you can get more languages. You can upgrade your knowledge skills. But you, there's also a whole list of things you can do with those. But yes, those the eight points you get in addition to can also be divided amongst your languages, your artisan skills, your knowledges. I like Stealthy Stride, though. That's a nice one. It is very it nice. Me, it struck me as a little odd that you can't default on Stealthy Stride. What do you mean default? Uh, the default skill table. Those are ones you can roll without having any points spent. In yeah, them. It sort of like literally creates like an, a magical illusion around you sort of thing. So it's probably not a skill you're going to learn. Well, the skill version, actually, like um, if you look in the descriptions, some of them will, a lot of the talents available as skills will say at the bottom, like, oh, the skill version functions the same in these ways, but doesn't have these magical effects. Oh, sometimes it's different. Sometimes it's not like lockpicking the skill. You need to have a physical set of lockpicks. If you're lockpicking the talent, you just summon lockpicks out of the air because reasons. Because magic. That's it. Elemental air magic. Oh no, Stealthy Stride is there. It's available as a talent. Not as a default, it's, you're it's, right. But yeah, there is a talent. You can do it as a talent. Yeah, you can't default to it, but you can learn it as a skill. One thing some people, if you are um, going to be, so if in a melee heavy group with a lot of people, surprise strike can give you a little bit of extra damage, but it's conditional. If your target is unaware or distracted, you add your surprise strike rank to your damage. But it it's replaces yeah, it replaces other things. You either do the surprise strike or um there's a whole like uh complicated network of what talents can be combined with what other talents, which for the most part doesn't come up because usually you don't get the talents that conflict with each other within a discipline. Yeah. Um, but I believe I believe Surprise Strike is one of the ones that works with pretty much everything else. Like, you can use that with Claw Shape and with Charge. Yeah, I think so, too. As long as the target falls into the Distracted or Unaware category. What, uh, I know we have a Windling, we have a Cinnamon, we have uh, a couple uh, to Scrang. What other races do we have here? Dwarf. Dwarf and a human, right? <laughs> That'd be... Okay, so no Orcs, no Trolls, correct? I don't think. Correct. Cool. Uh, I have a question. So under the class, it talks about the half magic stuff, right? Do I need mm -hmm. specific skills doing this, no. or is this sort of just a natural thing you do? Half magic is a natural thing you can do as your discipline. They include things that your discipline should know. Right? So a troubadour should know how to identify which instruments are good quality. You don't need a skill for that. That's a half magic thing. 
weaponsmiths can see 10 swords sitting on a table and figure out which one is the best quality just because it's what they do it's their half magic so each discipline has things that relate to that and it'll tell you but some other things if it makes sense for the discipline as well are doable that way okay um yeah they're, like they're... the the wild animal knowledge skill is probably not that useful for you because your half magic just kind of covers that and then some uh okay i see i see uh, okay, so this is like things that we won't really be rolling on either. They're just they're just things I would know. Is no, you roll on it. it. The way half okay, magic that's, I guess, is my half magic is always equal to your circle plus the applicable attribute, which is usually perception, but not always. Okay, gotcha. From from a game point of view, half magic stuff is the sort of stuff that players would, if they had to actually spend experience on, probably wouldn't actually raise because they might feel it was a waste. Okay. Generally, yeah. All right. Let's see what a creature analysis. Ooh, what's that? If you roll that and beat the creature's, I think, social defense or mystic defense, mystic. you you get to ask questions like, "What is its highest defense?" or "What is its lowest defense?" or things like that. What special maneuvers can you use against it? That's a mm-hmm. fun one. A lot of a lot of creatures in Earthon have like specific special maneuvers that you can be used against them, and being able to figure out what those are is quite nice. Hmm, interesting. It's a perception roll, but interesting. There's like uh, flying creatures, where if you hit very good, you can do a little bit of extra damage, or you can sacrifice one of those to perform one of the special maneuvers, which might be like clip the wings. You make it so it can't fly for a few turns or whatever. But you have to, with creature analysis, you can find out what options you have available for that. Or like, there are a lot of there are a lot of different animals that will do things like revert to instinctive behavior in some cases. Like some things you can start fights between them, or those kinds of things. If you know that you can do that, and you are able to pull off the maneuvers in combat to do it, so creature analysis is very nice for that kind of thing. Tempting. I'm looking at Sloth Blame and just pointing at the damage sponge all the time and going, he did it! That is a really good one for uh, thieves and assassins. That happened to us. Somebody, did they rob, steal something, or did they attack somebody? I forget what it was, but... They killed somebody and then blamed you on you. Yeah. So here I am getting hounded because everybody around believed that I did it. Because the... the Talent uses a little bit of illusion to kind of reinforce in everybody's perception that, hey, yeah, we did see that guy do that. <laughs> oh, I'm actually looking at it as a skill. It's one of the default skills. <laughs> Which, yeah, it, it works there too. It's going to be less effective because it's really hard to raise skills and uh, you can't add karma on it, but it still works. Okay, all right. I'm split between Stealthy Stride and Creature Analysis. I like them both. (laughs) But I know Stealthy Stride you can get as a skill if I wanted to, but still, it's nice to be able to spend karma to be more stealthy. Well, you can always pick up one of those next circle. Oh, yeah, we get one per circle? One of the free one or one of the bonus ones, we get one per circle or no? Is that yeah, one per is? circle. Interesting. Yeah, I, I know. Might... Once, once you hit yeah. 50, you have a whole other list of those, which are, you know, even fancier. So the the, the fancier ones, yeah. Pretty man talent options. Yeah, the fancier ones. Uh, let's see what I get. Animal companion. Yeah, a bunch of animal companion stuff. Battle bellow. Interesting. Uh, uh, iron constitution. Uh, iron constitution sounds cool. 
So Battle Bellow is another one of those social things. In this case, it is an inspiring shout to your allies, and you intimidate your enemies. Uh, Sky Raiders get it. I get Battle Shout, and that one is to lower their attack and defense, and then Battle Bellow is the one to help to inspire y'all, from what I understand. Battle Bellow, Battle Shout is also like a single target. Battle Bellow is like an area of effect kind of thing. Yeah, Iron Constitution and Lionheart, those are like extra resistance things. Like when you're dealing with poison or people trying to control your mind, then you have to make toughness and willpower checks to try and resist and throw off those effects. And um, those could be very scary. And so you have talents to add to those to make it make you much more resilient. And then there's Cobra Strike. Up to that silver strike step initiative step. Oh, I see. That sounds like Go I'm fast. an assassin. So it gives me a likelihood of more likelihood of going first. Oh, these are fascinating, actually. Okay. Well, that'll be later. I'll be Steel Thought that Weaponsmiths get is like a void blow, but for mystic attacks. So if somebody casts a spell at your mystic defense, you can use Steel Thought to try to avoid that. All right. Um, I think I'll I'll skip on the Analyze thing. I think I will be stealthy first, and then maybe next time I'll I'll get the Analyze uh, creature one, because that sounds really useful. But lower levels, I don't know how useful. Creatures will probably not have as, quite as many weirdness to them, so... Um, yeah, I think I'll go super stealthy first. On Discord, roll, uh, roll 20 is over here saying, oh yeah, the problem's resolved. Everybody should be able to get in now. The wrong. And they've got like 60 res replies now to that, which some of them is them replying to, but others are like, nope. Yeah, I'm still unloading. Yeah, I'm still unloading. And I said eight points, right? So I gotta find my eight points. Joe, do you remember the character discussion I had with about what, what type of character I wanted to make? No. I think you did last night. Oh, yeah. Talking about okay. So uh, I wanted I want to use one of my talents in my karma ritual. It begins with an F. And I want to use it with a mirror. Is that acceptable? Yeah. That should be fun to see, though. Where do I want to put these points? I feel like I want to put the most in unarmed combat just so I'm better chance of hitting, I assume. Well, it's a different of an average of one to two points. Oh, I see, I see. So if I did the no. You know, it's nice, but also these are like these are your starting skills. You're gonna outclass these pretty quickly and you know. Yeah. yeah, you'll have a chance to upgrade them pretty quickly. Okay, yeah, because this rolls 1d... But it's viable. You could put one point into... or Make sure every talent has one point, and then for one additional talent have a three in it, and that would leave you with a talent that could have two in it. If I'm doing my math right. No. Okay. If you did your optional talent as well, you'd have a three and the rest ones. Uh, oh, wait, because it, it goes by steps. It doesn't... Okay, so this actually doesn't change the step. Oh, okay. What doesn't change the step? Like the changing it from like a two to a three, because it's, it's, it's your deck 
plus that, right? It's your dex step plus your rank. Um, pretty much any time you're adding any modifiers like that, you're going to be rolling like the final step. Like if you've got yeah more dice. Plot. Yes, yes. Uh, there's pretty much there are almost no cases where you add or subtract numbers after you've rolled the dice. It's just whatever modifiers you have will determine which dice you're rolling. Which, the step system is wonderful, but also it's really great that we have a dice bot here to uh, take care of figuring out which dice we're supposed to be rolling. Because it can, it can get annoying. Yeah, in the game Jeff ran, we used modifiers instead of step modifiers so that we could just write our dice on our character sheet. Okay, It's okay. just such a hassle to re look everything up every time you want to roll something. I mean, eventually you kind of just end up memorizing it like anything else, but yeah, it's... I understand why people don't want to. Well, well, some of them are just so commonly used, like uh, Desperate Blow and Desperate Spell. That, plus, you know, other, like, additional effects that, like, add or subtract a couple points here and there were, were fairly common. So you ended up with, like, for any additional attack, you had, like, five or six different sets of numbers you might be rolling. All right. Oh, well, it's not moving on. So the next step, who are we at? Where are we at? Uh, I'm still messing around with uh, skills a little bit. You you skills and talents? talents? Yeah. I've pretty right. much I got all my skills and talents plugged in. I haven't Ta even gotten my skills yet. Sorry. Are done. Skills is where I'm at. Uh, I'm really going to have to look over the spells, so I don't know if I'll get those chosen tonight. Oh, yes, for casters. Okay. You have... Oh, that is not showing right. I put the, the chart in Discord, too, so you can look at that later, but... Oh, why is this not look, loading right? So... so it's 2d8 compared to 1d8 plus 1d6, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. If I want to put points into a skill, where do I do that? There is a skills tab right next to talents, I think. Right, right. But what I'm saying is, oh, I, I see it now. Hold on. Okay, that's what's going on. So I would put it in, in rank because we get eight Eight points. ranks, yes. All right, so spellcasters, your perception step is how many spell circles you can start with. You can start with higher circle spells if you want, but you can't use anything higher than your circle either, so it's something that you have saved for later. Well, you can't slot it, but you can rock cast it. Yeah, you can or rock cast can, it if you want. You can, you can grimoire cast it, which is kind of like, kind of like ritual cast from... Fifth edition, like you take ten minutes you to, in order to cast it a single time. So we get we get number of spells equal to our perception step. Number of spell circles. Okay, so like a third circle spell costs three of those step yes. points. Got it. And I believe you can only start with first and second. Yeah, I chose four first circle spells in one second. Hmm. Some of these uh, skills can be... Like picking pocket. That could be interesting. Yeah. It can be. 
as long as ice sheet is not one of your skills. No, I, no, no, no ice cheating of this character. Getting caught stealing in Trevar, though, will get you sold into slavery. I'm not going to steal, like, in the city. Or yes. an invitation to join a gang. Starting spells, yeah, you can only choose first or second spells. First or second circle spells. I I, I imagine she uh, this character could go like you know partial roguish, just not using as just a skill thing that, that they picked up, you know. I mean, Helen Kratos picking pockets is pretty much an artisan skill. There's also, for artisan skills, there's a weird list of other skills that also say can be used as an artisan skill, like map making and craftsman. There, there are a few little random tidbits around like that. Is there any... Like stipulation between like the skills on the side there between novice or journeyman. Yes, journeyman skills you can't learn until you're. You okay. can learn them at any time, but they they require they cost a lot more legend points to learn, and you can't start with them using your starting skill points. Yeah. So, advancement, uh, actually, let me find this. A great one. Graceful exit. That sounds amazing. Graceful exit is hilarious. I, I yeah. still have to see it properly used, but it just seems absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I'm arguing between that and sloth blame. You actually have a charisma, don't you? Yeah, yeah. But actually, I think I'm going to be taking uh, resist taunt. So I took awareness, conversation, haggle. Um, resist taunt. Uh, then I took charge, swift kick, and wound balance actually sounds like it could be important for somebody like me. Wound balance is wound, very wound balance is great. Charge, uh, that is specifically for a mounted talent. Ah, well then, I will get rid of that. <laughs> I've got charge as a talent, but yeah, you probably won't be relevant for anyone else, at least for a while. So, with talents, you meditate for, I think it's four hours, and you can raise a talent, as long as you have the legend points to spend for it. And it goes on the Fibonacci scale. So to go from 1 to 2 cost you 200 legend points. To go to 2 from 3 cost you 300. 3 from 4 is to 5. From 3 to 4 is 500. Journeyman talents that you learn once you hit 5th circle cost... They have a higher starting cost, so the progression is a little bit higher. Talents go from 1 to 15. Skills go from 1 to 10. And a novice skill, to learn it at 1, costs you 200. To go to 2 is then 300. So it already costs you a little bit more than talents do. But it also takes you, to go from 1 to 2, takes you 2 weeks of training time. And then you have to wait 3 weeks before you can raise another skill. Or, or you can raise the same skill again. But is they, it the they, same they, skill? You know, it's like... Because we have, because adepts have talents, they can become incredibly good at specific things extremely quickly. Yeah. And everyone else has to get by on very slowly learning skills, and so your skills will quickly fall behind your talents because that's just how adepts roll. We are all, all magic users. Yes. For the Earthdawn equivalent, I mean for the Shadowrun equivalent, you are all either an adept or a mystic adept.
Uh, Swift Kick. Who gets that? It sounds like, a, is it like a bonus unarmed attack? Is that what it looks like to me? Yes, it's a bonus unarmed attack that you can only use if you have a higher initiative than your target. Yeah. Um, although, sadly, it does not combine with your claw shape. Like, your claw shape modifies your unarmed damage. But uh, you cannot apply that to swift kick, sadly. Could I apply it to my tail, since that's my natural weapon? There's actually, okay, so in the companion, there are knacks, which are kind of like feats from D&D. They've got like prerequisites and training times and a whole other thing. And there are, I believe, knacks for claw shape where you use it on your tail or your feet for swift kick and uh, your t just trying tail attacks. But by default, it cannot be used for those. I was just thinking, it's like, oh, look out for his tail. Bam! Ah, damn, he kicked me in the shin. <laughs> oh, you were, you were wondering about swift kick and tail attack. Yeah, yeah, whether or not you could technically use his tail for the swift kick is basically what he's asking. Well, you could also just use the like the tail fighting combat option, but, you know. Yeah, that's not on this list of talents uh, available. It's not, a, it's, uh, not a, it's not a... It's a strong racial ability. Just like they have yeah. the option to do tail fighting and make an attack, an attack with their tail. They get a minus two penalty to everything they do in a turn if they use tail fighting. So it's kind of a trade off. But it does give you yeah. An and they attack. for the tail attack you do unarmed. So it works best for people like uh, beastmasters and stuff like that. If you uh, uh, are focusing on an unarmed type combatant. There's a whole mystic path, which is kind of like a prestige class, the tail dancer, who specializes in becoming way better at tail combat and different weapons you can use on your tail and things like that. That's not to say Ooh. it can't be powerful. I mean, you can get attached weapons, and then they can be forged and threaded sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's just you have, you, have to that... a, you have to put a bit more work to make the tail attack uh, really useful. Eh. It's a minor bonus until then. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's Whereas, why I'm like, look, multiple abilities to attack is why I'm looking for, and those look like good ones. They The extra attacks generally come at later circles. Um, roughly five-ish, except for to scrang in their tails, but it's not a super effective extra attack for the tail. It's a minor bonus. When you start getting the talents that give you useful extra attacks, five or so is roughly when you can start looking for those. Six is when most martial classes or disciplines get a talent that then increases their melee damage. Six is also six or eight is when spellcasters get will force, which increases their spell damage. For the yeah. artisan skill, mm -hmm. can I, like tattooing, is tattooing a thing? It is. In other editions, Beastmasters used to be able to do magical tattoos, but it's not in this version yet. Hmm. Yeah, I really liked, especially the animated ones you could get. Uh, would that attribute be dex based then? Um, no, it's perception. I think it's, it's, I think it's skill. usually artist skills. I think are actually usually charisma based. I mean, it kind of depends on like what you're. On it, but it also has a drop down box. Like, it does it? It looks like you could change the attribute. I don't know what that means. I mean, the char the character sheet just lets you pick whatever you want, but I believe artisan skills by default will go to charisma because it's kind of like it's about the artistic elements of it. But if you're trying to create something that's just higher quality, uh, like like craft, like like crafting weapon or crafting wood or something like that, that's a skill that could theoretically be rolled with either charisma if you were doing it for artistic merits or perception if you're doing it for more functional merits. Or dexterity if mm. you were doing it in some situation where it was about being able to do it quickly or, or that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, so. didn't it used to be perception? I think. Yeah, it's charisma now. Page 
No problem. And you said we get two rings in it or one? One. All right. And then you said languages, we get two ranks. Okay. Um, each rank is another language. Why is it giving me dwarf automatically? Dwarf Ooh. is the main language of bar save. I read that. Yeah, the Thoralic or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, that's it. The Thoralic, whatever how I pronounce it. Okay. Uh, do windlings have their own language? I imagine I would have that, right? Yeah, they do have their own language. Although, like, with the scourge splitting people up all over the place, you may and you may not have ended up in a windling care. You may have just ended up in, or your your family may have not have ended up in a windling care. You may have ended up in like an orc care or something. But but yeah, there are all kinds of languages. Usually, what most people do is like you you know you speak Thralic, you read Thralic, and you speak one other language of of choice. I'm in. Success. Let's see if I can get in now. Oh, stuff is loading. You know, I'm going to say that I think this is going to be useful. So I just went and looked at what I get at Journeyman and a couple of the, and actually still at Novice. I, some of the skills I chose, I actually get as talents. Oh yeah, that, that's a oh you mean later on. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, I don't want to have this as a skill right now. Yeah, for skills, typically the idea is you want something like climbing or uh, a, like a weapon skill. You're not going to get like sky readers. I don't know if they get like projectile weapons or something, but you might want something like that. But um, it's not it's not designed to replace your talents. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I don't want to burn points on skills that I'm... Like, I was looking at wound balance. I actually get that in one of my circles. Yeah, so you don't necessarily want to waste skill points on that, because eventually, you are going to have to spend buy it again, basically. Right? Oh, that I, is actually I, kind of like why why I like uh, throwing extra points into my knowledge skills and like the artisan skilling because those don't get replaced by any talents and because they're not rolled against opponents usually they won't be phased out of usefulness as your talents just skyrocket like five steps ahead of all your skills which will happen if you advance to tournament level. All right, I'm back in, too. All right, so you said we get two points for knowledge skills? Yes, I think. Two points, two ranks in knowledge skills. Mm -hmm. And the sample knowledge skills, the examples are over on the side. Alchemy mm -hmm. potions, botany, discipline lore, if you wanted to know things. Uh, so a Beastmaster can identify other Beastmasters generally with a half magic, right? You you know what they are, you can identify things. To know about an illusionist for a Beastmaster, you don't, would take discipline lore. And that one might actually mm -hmm. make you choose disciplines to know about, but uh, military organization is good. Legends and Heroes is a good one. Horror lore Ooh. is... Um, could be good, but also the more you know about horrors, the more they like you generally. Good to know. Um, I, I assume I don't need wild animals to sort of that's no. sort of already in my yeah okay. Um, I like legends and heroes. Uh, where, where could we go? Uh, these are all perception based, right? In general, knowledge. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, knowledge is perception. But for general purpose, Legends and Heroes is decent if you find a sword that has these weird marks on it. A Legends and Heroes might help you learn a little bit more about it. Now, somebody with item history would be better. But for certain things, it's a useful talent. 
item history is. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're so, kind of like I, item history is kind of like psych psychometry. Like you can hold, you can hang on to an item, and you can just come to oh, know what it was used for. More like a, it's right. a talent, right? Item history is more like a talent. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Does our, but also, uh, item like, history. Item history, very strictly, you don't necessarily know the key details. You may know, like, oh, this was used in some great adventure where some hero used to slay this kind of monster. But you don't know the names or the places of anything involved. And so that's kind of things you need to go out and research and actually know the legends and heroes to knowledge of. But nothing else. Okay. Is that something our, uh, our, our weapons master over there gets? Item stuff or no? Weapons, weapon smiths get that, yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. So between the two of us, we might actually get something interesting. So your weaponsmith, besides being an extra sword in battle, is probably going to be in charge of making your weapons magical so that they do a little bit of extra damage and or armor so that it protects you a little better, uh, but they get that later on, and for researching items. So when you find a thread item that's a magical item you give it to the weaponsmith for a week and he studies it for i think it has to be an hour a day or something but for the week makes his role and if he beats the item he learns a little bit about it to help you then find out specific details about it so that you can then unlock it and use it okay quick question about language skills mm -hmm. uh, you start out with a your native language, and that's it, right? You start out with that Sora like language, which is the dwarf language as well. It's 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 where basically the the language of the people in this area, right? Yes, Thralic Dwarven is the common. That's what your people speak that all over the place, and then in if you've got like isolated places, they might use other languages, their standard language, or just yeah, People's, I, people I do speak question is, what are other useful languages? Okay, so racial languages are Dwarf, Sparethial, Elven, Human, Obsidiman, Orzet for Orcs, Troll, Tiskrang, and Windling. They all have their own racial language. Um, Throlic is the common. Dwarf may have other dialects, so you may find, if you speak Throlic, you may find dwarves that don't speak Throlic, but you can still sort of get by because Dwarven is mostly the same. Throlic is the biggest important one, though, because the majority will speak Throlic. Yeah, and I mean, other ones that are kind of relevant is like like the the elves. I mean, they, at least some elves tend to be like pretty insular and will might insist on speaking Sparathiel specifically. There's also the Theron Empire. The Ther there's a language Theron. Um, so they're like, those are those are other languages that you might run into people who won't speak Thralic and will speak those, but yeah. Generally speaking, if you speak Thralic, you won't speak Theron and vice versa, unless you are from a care that was very um, historic preserving, but also a little leaning on the, uh, the new traditions. I'll save that until I get to sort of background stuff so I can figure out where I'm from and things like that. That might be better. Oh, by the way, uh, as far as timeline goes, how far after the Scourge are we doing? Are we doing like the current 4th edition timeline? or? So oh, yeah. I'm thinking of going back a couple years. Or maybe a year. I'm thinking of starting during the war or during the tail end of the war since you're going to be part of the Thralic expeditionary forces the war is going on you won't be sent to battlefronts or anything like that because you're investigating cares and maintaining uh, the infrastructure and stuff but the war is going on at this point. And presumably, the first time you return back to Thrall, the war will have been concluded. That's what I'm thinking so far. 
just a heads up, there's a lightning storm out right now, so in case I lose power, that's why. <laughs> okay. Um, starting equipment. There is a chart there. We don't really have to go into that exactly now. You can add a little bit. You start with uh, an adventures kit, your tools for your artisan skill, if they need tools, a dagger or a knife, or a similar size one or two weapon, so a small weapon. Magicians start out with a grimoire. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A grimoire by itself is like a size two weapon. You hit somebody over the head with that, they're going down. <laughs> You start with uh, traveler's garb, so road clothing, trail rations a week, and 100 silver pieces. Armor and weapons oh. cost more. The armor and weapons will come out about 100 silver you get, pretty much. Roughly, yeah. And for a mount... I believe I get the mount for free, but tack I think I'm going to have to buy. It's kind of a bit unclear. I was going to go with the Trojan, like the basically like a small tiger kind of thing. Actually, I was looking at Swift Kick, and you know, you were talking about how charge was for mounted combat. I was like, I wonder if Swift Kick is just, you know, you turn your horse around and bam. <laughs> uh, I have a question for like armor. Does that even does that improve your defense, or is it just like absorb damage? Like, what is armor? damage reduction? Yeah. Damage armor. Armor armor will cost you initiative and give you damage reduction. Shields will give you defense. You can wear armor? Windlings can wear armor, but the uh, limited the weight. amounts. Right, because the weight issue would be a problem, right? I think the weight of the armor gets modified. Weight, yeah. weight and cost of armor gets modified for windlings and like trolls, like the extreme ends of the size spectrum. You need to find that section again. there was only a hero lab oh by the way if you move over to one tab over there's something called gear and gear i noticed had your coinage and rations per day hey what oh so you could put that information in and you don't oh, have to put it oh, in yeah, under yeah. equipment yeah that's fine or try to figure out where to put it under equipment <laughs> I don't need weapon. Armor, here we go. Ooh, obsidian men only wear living armor. Ooh. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Very cool. All right, so windlings. Ah, windlings reduce weight of clothing and armor by 80%. Uh, oh, page good. 404. Okay. Or page 414 of the PDF. Ah, nice. So a uh, leather armor would cost you would weigh three pounds for a windling. Oh, that's in that's actually within my my weight limit. That's Padded cool. leather would weigh four pounds. Wait, is there not a simple table I can look at? For what? Weapons. Yes, weapons uh, is page 433. 433. Ah, I just didn't go far enough. <laughs> and here's the armor. Okay, cool. All right, all right, here we go. So the physical armor, is that how much uh, gets decreased off, like, damage? Or is that yes. what that is, or what? Yes. There is also mystic armor, which reduces magic damage you take. Which is which applies to like things that are living because anything that is living kind of interferes with or gets in the way of magic, and so. Oh, that's the mystic armor. Okay, okay. Yep. So that's like the living 
armor also gives you a mystic armor bonus. Yes. Oh, so nice. if you look at Fernweave, Fernweave is not very protective physically, but it, it has a mystic armor of three. But nice. it's so it's a expensive. little bit of physical and a decent mystic, but very expensive. Yeah, generally things that give mystic armor are tend to be pretty expensive, and a lot of also the like the living armors, they've got enchantments on them, and those need to be renewed on like a yearly basis at least, uh, which make them difficult. Okay, so leather being the cheapest only gives an armor of three, but doesn't even give an initially uh, initiative penalty. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Or oh, padded armor is actually cheaper. Ugh. With two, okay. Might as well go with leather if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, personally, I recommend hide armor. But... Yeah, hide is nice. I, I noticed that. It actually has an a uh, mystic armor as well, even though it's been issued with some of these. Walk guys. up, knock on him. Dad? So, what's your dexterity for the Beastmaster? Uh, 16, I think it is? Yeah, 16. What step? Is that step 7? Yeah, seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you normally roll a d12 for initiative. If you wore the hide armor, you'd roll a d10. It drops your initiative okay. step by one. Protects so me from. Yeah, it's not horrible. And then eventually, I think Beastmasters have the option of stuff like. Um, Cobra Strike. Yeah, Cobra Strike. Do they get Tiger Spring is another one? So you eventually mm. get talents that you can boost your initiative by. So a few points I, for armor is which not will offset. horrible. Yeah. Right. And this is literally five points off of every roll damage roll. Yes. Yep. Armor is fantastic, and the air armor spell that elementals get also fantastic. The game used to have a thing called an armor-defeating blow. If they hit you well enough, your armor wouldn't matter at all, which really sucked. Now, if you hit well enough, it just increases your damage a little bit, but the armor always matters. Okay. Um, does the cost change for me? I don't know. Making the, tiny armor makes a difference? <laughs> you can buy... Uh, regular stuff at regular price as long as it's within your size rating if you want something that looks fitted for a windling it costs you 25% more oh so like hide armor that's fitted for me would cost more even yes. though it's like only like five pounds <laughs> yeah. the hide armor you're buying here has been cut and resized and just kind of patched together to fit you but it's obviously not made for you but uh, stat-wise, there's no real difference, is what no. you're telling me? Okay. stat-wise, there's no difference. Uh, it just doesn't look as good. Right. Mm. Other windlings might make fun of you. I, I, don't, I don't know if they're, they're going to, like... Uh, who's kidding? I, I don't Who am I kidding? Other five... windlings are going to make fun of everybody yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not buying any weapons, so honestly, I don't think the, it matters that much if I spend 75 on this. Like, like I'm not, what else am I going to buy? I really. The other things to buy are probably not within the cost range, but yeah, healing items are kind of like way too expensive. The most you could get is like a single booster potion for fifty gold. Yeah, silver. That's what I did. All right, silver. A quiet pouch. If you are the sneaking type, is sixty-five silver, and it doesn't jingle. Oh, okay. Firefly chalk is twelve per stick, but yeah, the the other stuff, uh, booster potion is fifty. Mm -hmm. Although for a windling booster potion, it's going to cost you more, but it's, it'll be smaller. Yeah, but uh, I I get all that basic stuff anyway. The basic backpack yes. stuff, right? Okay, so I don't have to worry about any of that junk. Okay. And I mean, you know, ah, of course, this game also has its table of random knickknacks that you can buy. But 
Aaron. Right. Oh, what was up? Uh, I was reading something about Sky Raiders, and somebody was recommending the crystal uh, equipment. So they were eventually talking about yes. Crystal buckler, yeah. crystal raider. Yeah, those are pretty. Those are very. Oh my gosh, those are extremely expensive. Rare. Yes, they are. <laughs> they're also living armor too. Yeah, they're super rare. They're very expensive. Uh, even the, just the ringlet is is five hundred to start with. Uh, living crystal is eleven hundred. Good lord. Okay. Yeah, the buckler is the if you, board. If you if you read the description of Living Crystal, you, you will probably never want to actually use it. Oh, is it that bad? <laughs> it's 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 not that it's uh, bad mechanically, it just sounds deeply horrifying. Here, I will read you. Uh, let's go with Crystal Ringlet. Made from carved interlocking rings of Living Crystal. It protects your entire body, except for the legs below the knees. To provide sustenance for the Living Crystal, the armor is enchanted... Uh, oh, this doesn't go into it. Living Crystal is the one that's nasty. Most of the other ones are kind of yeah. fine. Living Crystal is the uh, small columns of crystal that are embedded inside of your body. Blood Magic pebble. in the character's blood causes the crystals to grow until the armor covers the character's skin. Yeah. Planting it causes five blood magic damage that cannot be healed. Blood Pebble is a series of small pebbles like this that you embed into your skin that then protects you. It does some blood damage that doesn't heal while you're wearing it, but it protects you, and you never have to worry about waking up without your armor. Yeah, Blood Pebble's an adept favorite. Interesting. You're walking around basically with wearing no armor, but you have studs all over. So it's obvious. You've essentially been, you've been bedazzled, really. Yeah. You look like Killmonger. Subdermally bedazzled. Alright, yeah, I'll, I'll get the fancy hide. The, the good hide. Okay. Uh, the character sheet on the table should automatically fill out your mystic armor, but just so that you know... If your willpower is anywhere from 5 to 9, you have 1 point of Mystic Armor. From 10 to 14 is 2 points. So anytime you are targeted by a spell that targets your uh, Mystic... No, they all target your Mystic Defense. That does Mystic Damage, you would subtract your Mystic Armor from it. A lot of spells, maybe the majority of spells, do Physical Damage... It's the illusionary wizard. A lot of wizard spells do mystic, and some nethermancer spells do mystic. Most elementalist is all physical. They like throwing rocks at you and sending fire at you. And let's see, finishing steps. I don't think we have time because of the roll 20 thing to do the the card thing offhand. So maybe at another time before we start. Oh, do I have to leave soon? I think Chris had to leave, no? Yeah, I but I mean, I mean if you want to do if you guys want to do your readings or whatever for yourselves, I don't want to hold that up. Is there since it's, the obsidian can only live do living, I think the only thing that was within the starting cost, I think, was just that crystal buckler, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, although you do get your starting three armor just naturally as a racial modifier. Uh, what are the cards, anyways? What are they for? It is a tarot-based system that asks questions that you answer in regards to your character and the group. Oh, right. I do remember you uh, messing with that. I, I remember. I remember you. Uh, you posted that. I saw it. Looked interesting. 
But it does take some time, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's better with all of us are here, though, right? We can't yeah. we can't do it really with without because uh, otherwise, because it, it's literally creating our our party and and um, our backgrounds, right? It's it allows you to add a little bit more depth. Hmm. It's not a mandatory thing, but it uh, it has you ask a few questions or answer a few questions. Um, yeah, didn't we do that for the the D and D game where we answered some questions like this person did this for you? Or yes, something like that? I just came up with some of those though. Right, but this is a more formatted. Funny. This is a more formatted version of it. Basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, similar thing. Yeah, how long do you think it'll take? Um, maybe a half hour to do a simple one, so we can do it later. Yeah, because yeah, because what time? Time. What time does Chris have to leave? Like right now? I'm on uh, I'm on Eastern time, and I'm I'm usually I gotta get up uh, pretty early in the morning. So oh, I'm on Eastern time too, but I I don't go I I never sleep, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 I know the feeling though. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're you're, you're not used to staying up this late, right? <laughs> well, no, this is usually this is usually around the time I hit I, I hit the sack. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, tomorrow it's it's still yeah back to work and all that. And, yeah. Okay. So, do you want to wait on this or yeah, can you I can wait half on this. We can wait on this, or I can draw some cards and send everybody some p. Uh, not PMs, but yeah, do it through I think Discord. It'd be more fun to do to do to do it with everybody here, like because then it adds more discussion and things like that. I think yeah. it'll be more fun that way. Gives us a chance to play off each other too, and the answers that they yeah, get. Yeah, we have our basic ideas of stats and stuff, and we can you know hold off on on sort of background stuff and things like that till next time. It's not like we're not we're playing this game anytime soon. We still have a yeah, we a, still have... quite a few sessions of other games. We still have some time to do one more meeting before that, so yeah. Yeah, cool. we could arrange for a different time to to finish these up and then clarify anything that we might need to run into and things like that. Um, one thing to consider as you have time, you can come onto the table, though. Let me see if the sheets actually have a spot for this. Is there like a notes tab? Yes. Uh, yeah, notes or record. So just in notes, um, it doesn't have to be world specific, especially if you're not too familiar with the world, but a basic idea of uh, like a short and long term goal, why you want to adventure, right? The general. Would that come out a bit with the cards or no? I mean, I, maybe I don't um, know what the card the cards will go. The cards are more inter party relationships. Mm, okay but this is like you know you've been living in a city why did you decide to go join an organization that is going to send you around to investigate cares you know most adepts they want to build a name for themselves they want to become famous they want to find a bunch of magical loot it can be as general as that or it could be you know maybe uh you have sick family members and you need to get rich so that you can raise a bunch of money so that you can try to petition a dragon to heal somebody, whatever. Okay. Okay. Normal things like that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It's okay. Like it, it worked for Prince Nedin, right? Maybe we can get the dragon to help my kid too. But yeah, so just a general, you know, a, a general motivation okay. all right some thought something to think about yeah and then i have everybody sheet here i can look at so i can plan some beginning stuff by the numbers um also if you can find art representations It's not super mandatory, but if you have something that you want to provide, I can make uh, like static images and custom tokens for it. I don't know. Oh, it's me. <laughs> oh, there's a few images here for Winlings. I'll have to see what what what, what I can. Got a tail and everything. <laughs> you could, you're like aha. 
I'm already done. Yes. Now I'll go look around for some more. I, I, I like that image, but I think I can find others. Dwarves riding tigers, unfortunately, somewhat difficult, but I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Very specific. May just get different images for, you know, the rider and the mount. I, I guess I should figure out which gender he or she is going to be as well. <laughs> You'll basically need three tokens. One wow. You. That's some nice damage on step 15. Your powers combined. <laughs> See, this is what Earth on Dice do. Yeah, step 15 is normally a d12 and 2d... Oh, or was that with karma? Nope, no karma nope. on there. Yeah, step d12 plus 2d6. Average should have been oh. a 15. Oh, that was a horrible <laughs> roll for damage. What? what is that? What am I rolling anyways? Step 9... So claw shape would do your rank plus your strength plus three. Oh, I see. So yeah. You rolled okay. a d8 and a d6 and got bad numbers. Yeah, I got a one. Wait, plus my. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But windling oh, or not but, windlings, yeah. beastmasters. Since that's a damage talent, you can spend karma on that. And okay. Okay. There is no easy button just to spend karma, but when the window no, pops it, up, it, it pops up. Yeah, it just pops up. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have like, to yeah, type you enter a four. Four in there. Oh, a four every yeah. time. Karma, your step four is your karma die. Oh, okay. So I put four in every time, and I yeah. still roll like. Okay, great. Yeah, this this dice roll is really good, <laughs> looking good for me today. Oh yes. Woo. I'm gonna be vicious for it. that's that's it. <laughs> and I'm gonna need to figure out some stuff with like how I do rolls for my mount as well on here, which I'm probably just gonna add as like. Um, I yeah, know, I don't know if they have. I don't know if it has room for a mount, but I can give you another character sheet for a mount. Okay, that might so, be the most convenient way to do it. I mean, so my mount does not start as being combat trained, and I don't get the ability to train it until second circle, but. Still have its steps and abilities around somewhere. Okay, so with the four bonus, it just adds an extra d6. Is that my understanding? Yes. Yep. Is that what it's doing? Okay. So instead okay, of d8, so d6, you're rolling d8, d6 plus another d6. Okay. And at higher circles, your karma die increases, I think, to a okay. d8. But that's mm. later down the road. Mm. I, think it, I don't think he does that in 4th edition, but there are some other things that can work kind of like Karma and use different dice that get added. So that's just why it has the entry there instead of just number of Karma. Okay. All right. What I don't and see is a way to spend more than one Karma on a roll, which is, it can happen sometimes. You can kind of do it by just putting in a bonus step of 8, which yeah. is 8 is 2d6. I think that's oh, what you have so to do. Oh, so I can do. use on a I can use actually more more karma if I so want to. So one mm -hmm. karma per talent. Mm -hmm. If you have different talents that you use in conjunction, you can spend one karma for each of them. In which case you're spending mm -hmm. two on the test. Like, for example, if you get the downstrike talent that lets you, it basically adds to your damage. If you're rolling basically Definitely your strength plus your downstrike plus your claw strike, you can add a karma to your claw strike, your claw shape, and a karma to your downstrike, and then you're adding. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, coming from above and flying, it gives me an advantage with that one. So downstrike is going to be very, very useful. Downstrike is great for windlings. Yeah. So okay, so so that would basically. also great for cavalrymen, is, unless you're fighting things that are taller than you and your mount put together. Which, as a dwarf on a Trojan, I might a lot. Yeah, like, why, why aren't you like riding around on an elephant? See, look, you'll be fine. I mean, that's what you gotta do if you're an obsidian cavalryman. They, uh, they, got, they got some mount costs. 
oh geez, I can imagine because you're heavy, right? I mean, like, like what kind of mount is gonna be able to carry you? T. Oh, let me check. It's insane. Yeah, thunder be uh, thunder beast maybe. Basically, you're yeah, thunder are basically like rhinos. You're 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 walking there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of what I think. <laughs> if you hadn't noticed the price on mounts, we're all walking. Probably. Yeah. Well, cavalryman that. starts with one for free. Yeah. You you get the fancy one for free. Aren't you yeah, excited? the the cavalryman section doesn't even mention what upset it start with. I'm not sure it uh it can it can handle this. It probably wasn't allowed in earlier editions, but they ditched the racial discipline requirements. Well, it's it's kind of just like you know, what what can you actually what can actually carry an obsidian that isn't going to be like journeyman level monster that is going to out outclass the rest of the party if you give it to them. Yeah. All right, so everybody has their karma. Thirty-three, decent unconsciousness rating for another mancer. Let's see. Yeah, mine's thirty-three. Death forty. The wound threshold nine, so they have to do more than nine. So actually, if they count my armor, because I subtract, so they would actually have to go like more than my armor plus the wound threshold. Yeah. Base. Uh, okay. Yeah, your armor, the damage is affected by armor first, and then whatever gets through has to meet or exceed your wound threshold to do a wound. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, so stun is the same as strain, right? Like when I'm doing strain, it would count as stun or no? Um, not entirely. There isn't really like a huge difference. Um, strain strain is regular damage. It is not stun damage, and stun damage oh. is also kind of like because that, that's something that comes up very rarely. Stun and damage. So I'm really confused right now. Yeah, I see recovery stun. Where is stun? It's at the top where Ned damage is. That's why I was confused. Of the character sheet. So I see the character sheet says stun, says damage, and says wounds. Then they strain. So I don't know where strain falls in. Is it under damage? Strain is just damage. Yeah. So strain is damage. Um, oh, I see at the very top for stun. But yeah, yeah. Uh, strain is damage. But it does not, it tracks separately. So say you avoid blow, right? Which costs you one strain. You fail and you still get hit for eight damage. You don't add your strain to the damage for nine to give you a wound. It's tracked separately and strain does not wound. Yeah, you take one damage and eight damage. Oh, it's like not two separate damage. hits, basically. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Now the damage... I continues to go up like there's no as long as I'm not like I guess damage I, goes I up okay until yeah. you hit your unconsciousness rating or your death rating uh, it, oh, goes, okay. it goes up after that too yes. Un unlike yes, because... D&D you don't track how many hit points you have left you track how much damage you've taken um, if so... you say your death rating was 40 right say throughout a fight you get hit a few times. Uh, the last hit puts you over your unconsciousness rating and puts you, say, at 45 damage, which is 5 over your death rating. There are healing aids like a last chance salve, because now you are dead, but a last chance salve forces you to make a recovery roll. If that recovery roll brings the damage under your death rating, you're not fully dead. You may still be unconscious, but mm -hmm. you're living still. So you track okay. how much damage you've taken. You don't stop at any point. Because if you take what a is... whole lot of damage, even a last right. chance have may not be enough to bring you back. So what is stun then? Is that like a special kind of damage? Yeah, I'll have to look at that. Like certain things only do stun or something like that? Like, like, uh, is it more like, um, it's, um, 
like a non-lethal sort of damage type stuff or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think that's like basically, it's, it's non-lethal damage and also can be recovered much more quickly. Um, it doesn't come up a whole lot. I think you have to basically be specifically attacking to stun in order for it to come up. So it's sort of like you're just yeah. wanting to knock somebody out. You're not trying to kill them. Oh. You have to do like so something of that nature. Strain damage, you can eventually die from strain damage. Stun damage will not kill you. Say you have 30 okay. points of regular damage and somebody attacks you to stun and they do 50. You've just taken a total of 80 points of damage now, but your actual damage is still at 30, so you're not dead. Right. So I guess my question is, so stun just has to be like a called thing? Like, oh, I'm just doing stun damage. Generally, yeah. It's time, going so. to be specific situations. It's not a random or general that thing. Now... Now, if it goes over their unconsciousness rating, would they still be just not knocked unconscious from yes. stun? Okay. 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 So that's that's what that means. Now, what is wounds in general? Then, if damage is what's going to kill you, what are wounds? They make it harder for you to function. Each wound is a minus one step. A a wound is like you got you got hit so hard in one hit that some kind of permanent damage was dealt to you. It isn't just like the gradual buildup of light bruises and wearing yourself down it's no this was one hit that damaged something about you yeah you actually okay. have a cut now that's bleeding you have a broken bone whatever maybe longer to heal yes okay okay so so in the long run you want to try to avoid wounds even uh, uh, uh if you possibly can because wounds take longer to heal yeah and they give you Negatives, right? They give you negatives to your to your to yes. your uh, to your roll, right? Okay, okay, makes make sense. And wounds also make it harder for you to heal because they affect your recovery tests as well. Oh, okay. Penalty to all your tests, including your recovery tests. And there are things like physician, the physician skill that can let you patch up wounds. They stop doing that, but yeah. And, and I'm also... assuming there's like an to recovery. I'm sorry, say that again? You broke Sorry, up. what was that? Is there like an order to recovery? Meaning like, uh, what what do you recover first when you make like a recovery roll? Um, you recover damage. That's why all of your damage then... is tracked, um, is totaled together. But you, when you make a recovery like roll... A wound no, hold on. Or no. Hold on. When you make a recovery roll, you reduce your damage. You have so many recoveries per day. When you wake up in the morning, if you have any damage, you must take a recovery test to reduce your damage. If you wake up in the morning and you have wounds but no damage, you automatically heal a wound. Uh, okay. So if you go to bed with wounds and some damage, you don't heal a wound the next day because you still have damage. Later. He's, he's saying bye. All right. Good night. I didn't want to interrupt. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, 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 I got you. So you basically have to have all your damage healed before you can uh, start clearing up your wounds. Yes, okay. without magical right. aid. Without magical aid. Interesting, okay. A healing potion. You drink a healing potion, it will automatically heal a wound and then give you a bonus on your next recovery test within, so for an hour or whatever it is. If you don't have any recovery tests left available, it forces you to roll one at step eight, so you get two d six healed. Mm, okay. And those cost three hundred a pop, so uh, got got to be kind of desperate before you start checking those. Yeah. Yeah, the more common one are boosters. Essentially, if you have like uh, some damage. Uh, uh, in the evening and you want to be able to get rid of a wound in the morning, you want to clear up that damage before you go to sleep. So you'll you often use some sort of like mild magical boost if you can on your last recovery of the day to try to get yourself down to zero so that the next day you can get that automatic wound heal. Okay. All right. So you want to try to, to heal as much uh, all the damage if possible to make sure that you can get rid of your wounds. Okay. Oh. Right. And there's like Right. spells and talents and stuff that give minor effects. The most common one is a booster potion, and they're like 50 silver compared to the 300 for the healing, and they give you a bonus to your next recovery test. Okay. 
And there's also like a salve of closure, which is, I don't have the price chart, but it's another expensive one. But if you take a wound, you put that on it and that will heal a wound. It doesn't heal any damage, but it will heal a wound. Okay. All right. That's pretty interesting. And I think wounds or recoveries are one of the few things that wounds do not reduce the step of your recovery test. It comes off of your result. So if your toughness is step five and you have two wounds, you will still roll step five and just take two off of your result to a minimum of one. You're not going to roll a step three. I'm not really sure why that is. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll fill in some of this other stuff later. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, there are just some things in Earthdawn that are kind of like carryovers from previous editions that just haven't necessarily been updated or haven't been reconsidered in a while. Right. All right, with that, let me end the stream at least so I don't forget.